I want to talk about like your blank side vampires actually came up in Joe Rogan's podcast recently, and the geek in me kind of got offended because the the the, the guest mentioned that they took the book, but only for its vampires, if I understood correctly. And it was going to be set in modern times, but that means it cannot be in continuity with your novels because vampires did not exist in modern times. They were brought back by science in the future. So <laughs> actually it works. I mean, you're talking okay. about, you're talking about Neil Blomkamp. I think, I don't remember uh, his he, name. He's the guy who did uh, District 9. Mm. Okay. And he, um, yeah, he approached me mm -hmm. uh, last year, early last year, I guess, and was a big fan um, of Blind Sight and uh, wanted to do something with He did not want to make a movie out of the novel, which is just as well because the novel's already been optioned for for movies. Okay. Uh, he thought that it would probably do better as a as a limited series, right? For something like HBO or something, which which I have to agree with. It's a it's a pretty dense novel. Um but he loved the idea of the vampires, mm -hmm. uh, so he They're didn't amazing. want to do. And there was there was a you know there were there were potential co um, copyright issues, right? Because the guys who had optioned the movie Lineside. had had uh, presumably Sarah. had rights on the biology that I had used. We ended up fortunately they forgot to renew the option at about the same time Neil was talking to me. Ooh. So the 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 rights fell out of their hands, and of course they wanted to get them back because they just forgotten. But we were in a position of power, so we could then renegotiate. So you kept um, the vampires. We could renegotiate the contract, carving out a little spot so that Neil could do his movie if he wanted. Yeah. And his thing was not it. It was not. Um, it's not going to be. It wouldn't be explicitly canonical, for mm -hmm. reasons of avoiding you know copyright overlap. But it would. Someone wanted to put them together. It would be consistent. He was thinking okay. in terms of the way he described it was kind of a a sicario set maybe five ten years in the future, showing okay. showing the origin of the oh. technology that gave rise to the vampires. So it's not modern modern. It's just it's not modern. I mean, it is. Enough. It's it's closer to modern times than it is to vampire or than it is to blindsight times. Okay. So in that sense, yeah, when I wrote Blindside, I had, I envisioned a vampire resurrection as a fairly recent technology, but that was never explicit. It was never explicitly stated in Blindside. Yeah, that's how I started took doing it, too. it, right? Yeah. So you true. could you could and and the the movie itself had the you know we went back talking back and forth about about um, potential plots and storylines and stuff, and it it had the potential to to you know expand uh be an arc basically a a story arc that would last decades because of course vampires can hibernate yes so so it would have at least started in the very near future um and and he was you know i i got quite excited about it he got quite excited about it um he was a little, he got kind of skittish about the rights overlap, but that we got that cleared out. But by the time my, my new agent um, came up with a, an actual contract um, to develop this product, project, uh, his window of vulnerability, like he basically wanted to write it last summer and, and my agent didn't get around to cobbling together the contract until oh. early October. So the window passed. Oh. And Neil has now gone on to other things. I don't know. I mean, he's he last I spoke to him, he's still really interested in doing it. He just doesn't have a window of opportunity now. Um, I, I've been down this road before, you know. It's even even if he even if we had signed the deal and and gone into business on it, it's you know, that means that the chances of a movie actually making it into production are like one in a hundred instead of one in a thousand. It's yeah. still better than most, and it's you know it's money in everybody's pocket, which is good. Yeah, um, <laughs> you still get paid. And, and at this point, at this point, we're sort of back to square one. I mean, I'm I'm still happy to do it. I, I he says he's still happy to do it if if we can make the times work out. Maybe it'll happen this year. Maybe it'll happen next year. Maybe it'll never happen at all. Uh, but in any case, it was it was fun to meet the dude, and we spent a lot of time sort of jitsying. Um, you know, between his home in Okanagan and, and the Okanagan and me here, um, because I was, I was a big fan of of District Nine, um, and I thought Elysium was a fine movie too. Uh, so, although I had you know I had some plot related issues with it, but it's still, I mean, to actually have the guy who makes those movies on your Zoom screen saying he likes your stuff, yeah, yeah, is enough to make you you know cream your sweatpants 
<laughs> but you see, nonstop. I'm such a typical nerd because here I was nitpicking a little detail with having all of the facts. And then you also told told me, oh, now it's not going forward. And I'm like, what do you mean it's not going forward? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it's 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 on hold for the time being, right? I mean, yeah. he's, he's a busy guy. He's not just doing work in in movies. He's doing work in video games and so on as well. So. So, you know, I'm not going anywhere. The idea isn't going anywhere. The rights are available. So so hopefully he'll he'll find time in the future to do it again. So your vampires, uh, because we kind of skip that. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of have to, when this show, I kind of have to remember, like, people might just not know the stuff I do or that you do, obviously, as the other. But uh, how could, how do you describe the vampires in your uh, fictional world? I mean, in the in Blindside and Acropraxia. Okay, vampires in my world were a yes. um, essentially a distinct hominid subspecies mm -hmm. that kind of branched off from the human baseline um, and existed as a cannibalistic subspecies. Some people said that they weren't even, um, some anthropologists and, and, and biology, evolutionary biologists would claim that they're not even a distinct species because they were capable of interbreeding. They didn't diverge genetically enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so some people describe them as series, uh, basically a series of just a bunch of mutants with a consistent set of deformities. Um, but one of those deformities was an inability to um, synthesize a particular protein called a protocadhedron. Cadhedron. And that's involved in certain aspects of central nervous system development. And so basically they, and it's also something that's only, can only be found in other primates. So because they lost the ability to synthesize this protein themselves, and because they could only get it by eating other primates, they became cannibalistic. And I mean, the, the basic, the basic origin story was I, I, started, I mean, without going into the explicit embarrassing details of how I was forced to come up with, with vampire ideas on the fly back in like 2001 or whatever, um, I, I was just kind of curious to see if I could take what's probably the most ludicrous and, and stupid supernatural stereotype and come up, you know, hand wave semi-plausible explanation yeah like the for, crucifix right? is because the crucifix they have seizures. is a perfect example right you have yeah. something that preys on human beings so it has to be super smart it has to be able to outthink us so you've got mm -hmm. something that's way smarter because they're outnumbered like corpus callosum yeah. um but part of its pattern matching part of its visual pattern matching skills um involved types of associations which ended up causing its extinction because there are in the brain, there are visual receptors that that respond to certain primitives. There are there are types of arrays in in the back of your head on the visual cortex that fire only when they perceive horizontal lines. Fire only fire only when they perceive vertical lines. And this is the way we end up perceiving complex scenarios. We have different clumps of cells that specialize in different types of shapes and different types of orientations, and they all just fire when they see what they're programmed to fire. And then further up the stream, um, the brain integrates those into a, an overall, an overall uh, image. So what I posited was that the receptors that fire in response to horizon lines and, and horizontal stimuli, and those that fire in response to vertical lines like tree trunks, um, ended up getting cross-wired. So that if both sets fired together simultaneously over a certain large range of visual arc, maybe 30 degrees of visual arc, you get the equivalent of a grand mal, I guess they call them tonic clonic seizures these now. Anyhow, basically a seizure, an yes. epileptic fit. Uh, and this didn't tend to get <clears throat> weeded out because A, vampires have very small um, populations. So there's something called genetic drift where something that's genetically neutral doesn't necessarily get weeded out. It can be fixed, can become fixed in the population because the population's small. It doesn't take much for a neutral trait to sort of spread throughout a small population. Um, and it was genetically neutral because there aren't that many intersecting right angles in nature. And so by the time we started building Euclidean geometry, by the time we started building houses with window frames that had sort of cross beams and so on in it, this trait had become fixed in the vampire uh 
neurotype. And so they started freaking out whenever they saw yeah. intersecting right angles. Um, that, that had to be, you know, that had to occupy a certain amount of their, and this is, you know, this is just my half-assed way of explaining why vampires but, feared crosses. But I have a question. I have a question though. Uh, and maybe it's answered in blind sight and just missed it completely or in acopraxia. But when in your canon, when did vampires, before being brought back by science, when were they extinct? When did they go extinct? Because it has to have been in a moment where humans had crucifixes for a legend to happen. Uh, yeah, there was, yeah. I mean, Cause, for cause one my, thing, my first thing, read was almost like prehistory. Like, uh, anyway, go ahead. They, they, they basically, yeah, they basically, I'm going to say they basically died out around 10,000 years ago. Okay. Um, interestingly but then but then wait ten thousand years then they didn't meet crucifixes um interestingly there was okay maybe you're right when did i mean yes yeah, that well, was bugged me because it, 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 it sounded know. like they were a, so far back you know i did and a then, whole i did a whole um i did a whole talk basically a scientific <laughs> lecture presented by this by this <laughs> pfizer hack this far big pharma hack who had accidentally discovered um yeah. the vampirism genotype by accidentally killing a bunch of autistic kids um it's up on on youtube if anybody That's a company that. actually show I actually show timelines decide you know when things yeah. sprouted out and when they when they went extinct yeah. recent discoveries i was really surprised just the past couple of weeks i've discovered yeah. that that uh, homo habilis was capable of speech, was capable of like really sophisticated tool use, was capable of probably even building things like rafts and long-term migration, like things that we, not even modern humans, things with like basically half the human brain size were capable of, up. were capable of far more complex communications than we originally gave them credit for. Homo habilis, let's see. Oh, okay. So these things, yeah. So so there are things that are like, you know, 200. About 2.3 2 to 1.60 five million years ago okay um yeah there yeah. there are things that are like hundreds of, of thousands of years old that are actually yeah. were actually pretty sophisticated i'm pretty sure they weren't building euclidean stuff they were they were they may have been sort of building huts but but yeah no you're right it's it, it was one of those dawn of of um history things and of course because human technology advanced at different rates in different parts of the world mm -hmm. there would be parts of the world there would be you know certain types of human civilization where where vampires dared not tread, but other parts <clears> where <throat> they're humans, you know, we're still basically in the Stone Age. Which um, would actually... I've always, I've always played around with, one yeah. of the things I played yeah. around with was the idea, and I haven't played around with this canonically, it's not in any of the okay. stories, but I always thought that, that Indian architecture, you know, with the, the yeah. weird curves, the sort of the onion shape, I always kind of wondered if maybe there was some kind of a, maybe I could, you know, write a little scientific note about how early Indian architecture that tended to shy away from vampires. right angles may have had an adaptive significance in that, in that sense. Perhaps there's yeah. like, in the same way that there are bits of, of, of Neanderthal DNA in all of us, maybe there were little bits of, of vampire DNA. Your vampires don't, well, what was it? They don't have a sense of, of vampires present don't, and past? don't use past tenses. How does that work? They they just live the all of their memories are, feel like a present moment to them. Was yeah, that I mean they can't they they can't. I mean we yeah everything is sort of parallel processing. When they call back a memory, they replay it as opposed to oh that's okay that's what it means. What okay, I wasn't sure what it meant. Okay, so no, that's said, like vampires a... vampires can use past tense if they want to because they're very smart creatures, right? They yeah. just don't tend to do it naturally. And nobody's okay. going to tell them to change because they're vampires. Yeah. Okay. You see, I, I never understood that quite exactly where I thought maybe it meant they didn't know where in their lives they were as they were experiencing it. But that, that was like, again, I was trying knowing, to make sense of that, but that's not what it was. Knowing where they are, okay. knowing where they are, again, is it apply, applies conscious awareness. Vampires are still conscious, but they're not as conscious as we are. Think of dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where you see yourself doing things. And there's a certain dream logic that isn't really logic at all. Yeah. And you are kind of a distant observer of your own dreams, even if you're perceiving it in first person. Okay. It's that kind of, that's the kind of experience I think vampires go through all the time. And if they're going to do what they do to other sentient beings, it makes yeah. sense that that's how they would 
So it's yeah, seen the so world, it's, right? <laughs> I'm still playing around with ways of actually showing things from a vampire stream of consciousness. I've been sort of playing around with having like three or four columns on a single page, each of which contains a different thread of vampire because, consciousness. 